Hello again and welcome to another Fly the Wing in Flight Maneuver video. If you're a student or private pilot, you've already gotten a small taste of flying by reference to instruments. But to prepare for your instrument check ride, you'll need at least 40 hours of real or simulated instrument time. Now, in this short video, I'll offer a few tips to help jumpstart your instrument training using the traditional six-pack of steam gauges in a single-engine airplane. You'll learn to scan the pertinent instruments looking for information from two or more instruments to confirm what the airplane is doing. This is called cross-checking. Then we'll interpret this information and finally control the airplane based on the data we've collected from those instruments. How you scan is a personal preference. You can utilize the radial cross-check where you look at the attitude indicator, then glance from the AI to other instruments, or the inverted V, which also begins with the AI. Or you can use the rectangular cross-check, which is what I tend to use. The rate of your scan will change based on the demands of the flight situation. You'll learn what to look for, when to look for it, and what response to make. Now you want to be aware of fixation. This is a condition where you're so focused on one instrument, such as holding altitude, that you neglect what's happening with other instruments. Omission of an instrument from your cross-check is another likely error. It's many times the result of fixating on another instrument. And emphasis on a single instrument instead of the combination of instruments necessary for attitude information is common during the initial stages of training. You want to rely on the instruments that give you the best available information for what you're trying to achieve in the airplane at that moment. Now, we don't have time to cover every possible flight scenario in this video, but for example, if you're trying to maintain straight and level flight, the primary instrument for pitch is going to be your VSI followed by your altimeter. Primary for bank is the heading indicator, and primary for power is your airspeed indicator. When we change the flight condition of the airplane, we'll most often use the attitude indicator as a primary instrument to begin and end that change, such as in a climb, a descent, or a turn, and then begin to cross-check with other instruments to confirm that we've achieved the desired bank or climb rate. Well, let's get into a Cessna Skylane now and run through some of these instrument basics. So I'm going to roll through a lot of these tips about flying under the hood, basic attitude instrument flying really quickly. This is something we cover a couple one-hour lessons actually, but the first thing is to disregard whatever you're feeling when you're under the hood from your inner ear and what your body's telling you because you're getting wrong indications. And as soon as you realize that and trust your instruments, the quicker you'll get the grasp of this instrument flying. The other thing you want to do is fly with a light grip on the control wheel. You don't really want to let go of it, but if you can fly with two fingers rather than the G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip on the yoke, you'll have a better feel for what's going on with the airplane. You can fix slight deviations and corrections uh, a lot sooner. Now remember our gyro instruments are these two, the attitude indicator and the heading indicator, and they're powered by the vacuum system in the airplane. This particular airplane has dual vacuum pumps and enunciators to tell us if one or the other goes out. We have a turn coordinator, and it even says on it that it's DC, it's electric, so that's indicating uh, uh, our uh, bank from a different uh, power source. Of course, we have the airspeed indicator, which is the only instrument that uses the pedo system, also uses the static system, as does the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator. Now there's two different scenarios in which you're going to be under the hood. One is what we're doing right now, which is basically static state. I'm trying to maintain a heading, trying to maintain an altitude 4,500 feet in this instance. The first instrument that's going to show me if I'm deviating from this when I'm trying to stay straight and level is going to be the VSI. Now it's real hard to see on the attitude indicator any minor changes in pitch or bank. We will begin and end any changes starting with the attitude indicator, but right now there's no changes going on. We're trying to be steady state, straight and level. So the VSI is going to show you the first indication of a change in altitude. Now, it's true that it has a, a lag to it, but that's only in terms of the rate. If we want to know whether we're uh, uh, climbing 500 or 700 feet per minute, we do have to wait a few seconds for it to settle in. But any indication that you get above or below zero, if it continues, it's going to eventually change your altitude. So this is the primary instrument for pitch when I'm trying to maintain straight and level flight. Now, if the airplane started to bank one way or the 
the other. It's kind of hard to see little tiny changes on the attitude indicator. I just kicked it into a little bit of a right bank, two or three degrees. You can barely see it on the attitude indicator. But notice what's going to happen is my heading's going to start to change. So in a steady state, when I'm trying to maintain a, a straight and level condition, the first thing that's going to show if I have any bank is going to be the heading indicator. So if you've got a heading bug in your airplane, use it, bug it, you'll see first whether you got any bank in there from your heading indicator. The primary and secondary gets a lot of students confused, but the main thing you want to know about that is there's what is the best instrument that's going to give me real-time information for what's happening in the airplane. Now, if I wanted to begin a, a turn right now, I can start with the attitude indicator. And while I'm doing this, my scan is continuing. I'm not just fixating on one instrument and omitting others. So I start a bank here. I can start the bank with the attitude indicator and then verify it with the turn coordinator that I have pretty much a standard rate turn going. We're over a little bit of terrain now. We got a little updraft, which is what's kicking up the altitude. Even though we're in a turn, we're still indicating a little bit of a climb. And if I wanted to turn to heading 300, this is going to be my indication of when to roll out of the turn, but for right now I'm maintaining about 15 degrees, standard rate turn, keeping the ball centered. I'm going to have to push on the yoke to get it back to 4,500 because of that little thermal we got into. And as I come around to my heading, I can roll out, start here by rolling out on the attitude indicator, verify that we're wings level on the turn coordinator, and then substantiate that fact as well with our heading, which is 300. Pretty much have it back to 4,500. I'm having to push a little on the yoke, probably because of that hilly terrain and the heat of the day building up under us. So I'm going to retrim a little bit. One thing you learn about flying under the hood is it's all about trim. Small, minor corrections as soon as possible are much better than much larger corrections much later on. Now, if I wanted to start a climb, let's do it in this same heading. I'm going to start with the attitude indicator, bring it up about a dot above the horizon. I can verify that that is indeed a climb because the VSI is starting to change. And I do have to wait a few seconds for the rate to settle in. So I'm going to work it to around 500 feet per minute. I'm going to need about this much back pressure on it, and I'll trim for that. I think I'll go up to 5,500 feet, which is about 1,000 feet, and at 500 feet per minute should take me a couple of minutes to get there. So now I've changed from straight and level flight. I'm basically going straight, but I'm no longer level. So my primary instrument for pitch right now, the attitude indicator combined with the vertical speed indicator, and I'm just making sure that these things correlate. And then secondarily, of course, the altitude should continue to change as it is. I'm having to put a little right rudder in there just to keep it coordinated to those left turning tendencies. Remember the formula? Attitude plus power equals performance. So I've got this attitude in there. I've got the same amount of power. So my performance went down substantially. We basically went from about 134 knots straight and level to about 102 knots over the ground and about 92 knots indicated airspeed. So we still have a little bit of a tailwind working for us. And we'll keep this climb coming. 500 feet per minute go another 300 feet and of course the rule of thumb it's the same as VFR flying is you want to begin to level off at about 10 percent of your rate of climb so when the airplane gets to about 5450 I'm going to start to lower the nose and again when I say slow I mean slow gradually I'm going to initiate that we're in a steady state right now it's a straight ahead climb but we're going to change that, so we're going to start with our primary instrument for change, which is the attitude indicator. There's my 5450. I simply put the dot back on the horizon, and the climb should stop. I can verify that with a VSI. And as it slowly comes back to settle on zero, I'm within about 20 feet of my established altitude. I can make a small, gentle correction for that. And because I had the airplane trim for the climb, I'm going to have to retrim it again. Welcome to flying under the hood and IFR flying. It's a constant change in pitch, power, performance, and trimming every step along the way. So just a little bit of back pressure. There we go. And we're back to straight and level flight. Constant state. As long as this stays close to zero, I'm going to stay close to that altitude. 
And as long as my heading stays to what I had it bugged on, I'm going to stay at that same heading. I'm straight and level. Don't be too concerned if some of this seems confusing to you at first. That's why we train and practice. And even once you do have your instrument rating, you're going to find that you have to practice at regular intervals to keep your scan going and to stay sharp on instruments. Have fun, fly safely, and I'll see you again next time for another Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video.